And uh, now we move into the molecular genetics of neuroendocrine tumors, which is an area that needs to be really updated and also de further developed. So I'm happy to call on Aldo Scarpa to give us some insights in, into the molecular genetics of neuroendocrine tumors. Thank Please, you Aldo. very much, Robert. And uh, what we are always needing uh, is uh, cancer biomarkers. Uh, we need them for prognosis. That means we have to decide when and uh, to treat and when to stop. We need to predict what is the drug useful for that patient, and we need it to say if that patient is suited for the drug. Uh, now, we, uh, we learned a, f a little bit of lessons doing uh, experiments during the last years, and some come from expression profiling of uh, messenger RNAs and microRNAs. Uh, first of all, we could see from a large uh, expression profiling study that insulinomas seems to be a different disease from all the others, and uh, all the neuroendocrine tumors, in this case of the pancreas, from well-differentiated tumors, carcinomas, and also poorly differentiated, they seem to be uh, molecularly uh, diseases that may trans transit from one type to the other, at least in part. And then uh, expression profiling also showed that TSC2 and P10 were uh, downregulated, and these are inhibitors of the mTOR pathway, so pointing to a central role for this pathway in these diseases. Then microRNA expression profiling also gave different results, uh, but uh, one of these were that microRNA21 was strongly expressed in and associated with liver metastasis and ki 67 index. And microRNA21 as a target, one of the targets is P10, actually. And again, microRNA21 has to do with something related to mTOR pathway. Then uh, we moved also to study uh, learning lessons from heredity. I mean, the main uh, uh, hereditary syndrome uh, uh, that has to do with pancreatic nets is MEN1. And also, we know that heterozygous mice, they do develop MEN1 syndrome. So we took care uh, of uh, a large number of cases, 100 cases were sequenced, and we had the expected 25% of mutations. But also, when we uh, uh, read immunostochemistry with this key to read the immunostochemistry, we did realize that uh, we have an abnormal location and expression levels in up to 80% of cases. I don't know how to deal with this. This is a mutation. I don't know how to deal. Can you get, help me right, uh, get rid of this? Thank you. So this is normal immunostochemistry. You see in the, the islets, you have the main one uh, uh, the main in protein is into the nuclei, and all the other cells is also into the cytoplasm. But uh, when you look at uh, uh, immunostochemistry, you may find different uh, uh, patterns, but mainly when you have uh, the nuclei that are blank, there is no protein inside, you have a problem. And if you have the positivity into the cytoplasm only, it is usually, as we could see in these two cases, that the normal allele has been lost and the protein that is into the cytoplasm is the shorter one, the mutated one. Now, what is, uh, this is a very recent paper, just appeared at the end of last year, uh, uh, but now available online, that menin is involved also with AKT mTOR pathway, because when you have menin present, you have no phospho AKT. When you have the absence of menin, you have phospho AKT uh, highlighted. So again, we see that even menin has to do with this central pathway for neuroendocrine tumors, at least for pancreatic, those of pancreatic origin. Now, we then moved to, uh, to make some sequencing, and uh, uh, we started uh, with this design. We uh, uh, chose 36 genes, uh, six belonging to the AKT mTOR pathway, looking for mutations there, and then, of course, four were uh, tyrosine kinase receptors, AGFR, HER2, KIT, and PGFR alpha, and then 25 different kinases that uh, uh, have been found frequently mutated in other cancers. 
To make a long story short, we only found that two ATM mutations. These are mutations in cases where we had no MEN1 anomalies. This is very close to MEN1 gene and may be the, the, the starting point for the development of these two tumors. And then only one KIT mutation and no other mutation in these 36 genes. Uh, what we did find in three cell lines that are the bone, CM, and QGP, that are those that we have been using to make preclinical studies for to testing the drugs, that we have mutations. And bone has PI3K mutation. That is why AKT is always on in this cell. And that would be useful. And uh, a CM cell line has mutation of VAGFR receptor 1. Uh, so it may turn useful to test for these drugs, but none of these mutations, including FGFR3, has been found in 100 cases we have been looking for. So we are again into the dark. So uh, technology uh, allows today to make a, 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 a sequence of the entire genome in a few days, and there has been a large initiative uh, that has started an International Cancer Genome Consortium that has uh, put together many different countries to study these diseases, and Italy joined with a project that, uh, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that Italy is in charge of sequencing the genome of 200 gastroenteropancreatic nets, and ArcNet is the research center I'm the director of, is in charge of, uh, of this effort. May I have the... So the International Cancer Genome Consortium uh, is... Sorry. Okay. Let's say. Uh, 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 the organization to sequence the entire genome of, uh, um, uh, of, of different cancers has been organized by 20 different countries, and each country has the duty to sequence 500 tumors of the frequent type, normal and tumor the entire genome. And we, uh, as Italy, we have to sequence 250 tumors, of which 200 will be neuroendocrine tumors. Now, the, uh, as you can see here, you have a, a, a patient journey and the genome journey. This is the organization uh, to, to recruit the patients and the information correlated, and this is the, the, the sequence of the genome journey. Now, you get the patient, uh, you have the patient, and then the doctor that sees him uh, is committed, uh, is a highly motivated doctor that is committed to uh, collect all the data of the, uh, and to pass it to the uh, referral center. And also, he, he's committed to get the most important uh, imaging uh, uh, procedures, whatever they are, uh, contrast, no contrast, and it is deposited into the uh, database. And the same applies for an endoscopic uh, important information, and the same, of course, for the histologic uh, uh, slides that is the most important for the, uh, for, for the case classification. Then all the information is also the staging information that will allow to choose for patients that go to operation, because to do the entire genome sequencing, we do need a large piece of material. So we will choose at the very beginning uh, the, uh, the cases that go into the operating room. We should go. Here we go. They will call the referral center, and the referral center will take care of uh, getting into the operating room with this personnel and to uh, take care of the, all the uh, information during the operation, including when the, 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 the vessels are closed and the timing and all the, the important information. These are the different timings of the operation, and then the histopathology, uh, all the material is immediately checked for the composition and cancer cellularity, of course, and then the, uh, the sampling is immediately taken. Some, of course, will be uh, paraffin embedded material, but some of it that is cancer and normal will be snap frozen to get DNA and RNA, and some will be used 
uh, as fresh material to try to and obtain xenografts, and from xenografts to obtain cell lines, even if we expect it will be very difficult from neuroendocrine tumors, we were only able to get xenografts from poorly differentiated tumors, as you may imagine. And then, let's go through quickly to what is actually the, the, the genome journey. Uh, just to say that what are, uh, that any single step is controlled by standard operating procedures, of course, because it is a huge effort, huge amount of, uh, let's say, money and efforts from people. So uh, it is very important the check of the material uh, step by step. And uh, even when you extract the DNA on the RNA, checking the composition of the material every few slices uh, at the microscope. And only if you have all the material controlled, but also all the information coming from the patient and going from the starting point when the patients come with the uh, anamnesis and going to follow up, we will proceed with the. And in Italy, we uh, funded the PANIN, which is Pancras Italian Network, but also Pancras Italian Neoplasia. And, uh, 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 for, for the collection, let's say, of, of cases and collaboration uh, between many centers. Uh, what we will do for neuroendocrine tumors is the entire genome sequencing, of course, the uh, sequencing of the transcriptome and possibly the epigenome, but this is not a real duty. When we talk about transcriptome, we are talking about uh, messenger RNA and also non-coding non RNAs. Naturally, and I will not miss any, uh, any point, just saying that from the sample submission to the microarray to the preparation of libraries or whatever, any single step is highly controlled. Uh, otherwise, we do not go through. What are we looking for? We are looking for deletions, insertions, translocations, inversions. All of these are possible to see with the... Uh, 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 use of uh, whole genome sequencing, and of course, a huge effort uh, with bioinformatics. So there is a large group in the consortium helping each other to find the best ways to find uh, easily all this. But it is not an easy task, of course. We are collaborating strictly with the uh, Australian group and the German group, uh, uh, also on the bioinformatic point of view. This is uh, an overview of what you, you can get. This is an overview of the genome. Uh, where you have chromosome by chromosome the, the information. For example, these, uh, these are the translocations between two chromosomes, and here you have the, the losses or uh, the allelic mutations and so on. Uh, this is what we can imagine if in a few years we, we may have as a response for, uh, in this case, pancreatic adenocarcinoma, tumor cellularity, which shows a few cases with a high cellularity to start. We are collaborating with the uh, Australian uh, group for also uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. See, germline sequences variants, somatic mutations, how many affect gene, known genes or cancer genes, and, and so on. Uh, what we expect, actually, is uh, to make a long story short, is that when you have all the material uh, sequenced, and you have all the mutations uh, recognized, you may uh, assemble this information uh, with um, making up pathways with bioinformatic uh, tools. This is Ingenuity, it's a very simple uh, program. And as you can see, the red are mutated genes, for example. You may say that in this particular case, you may use these two drugs, cisplatin and uh, uh, particular cell, because they hit this mutated gene, let's say, this pathway altered, or maybe these other two that hit on this other place where you have activation, for example, of the ARC pathway. And on the other side, you may have alterations that have no uh, big uh, information from the biological point of view, such as this translocation that we don't know what is doing there, but that is a marker for that particular cancer, and you may find it into the plasma in circulating DNA, and you may use it to follow up the patient. This was a colorectal cancer, sigmoid colectomy, and then it goes up, and then you have metastasis, and if you give chemotherapy or right hepatectomy, you see this marker going up and down. Now, what we expect, actually, is may you give me the, the 
go back to the PPT, Bob. That w w what is the impact we are expecting? Uh, uh, so I'm going to go back to this. We are expecting that uh, first we know that the current system uh, as an organ based on, based on the assumption uh, uh, that cancers are more related to their organ of origin than to other cancers. And we're discussing in the last days uh, if it is important or not to recognize where the neuroendocontinuous come from. Uh, what we know from the sequencing that has been doing uh, by many groups in these uh, last five, six years, that we may not find a high proportion of mutations of, or, or, uh, of the peculiar type for some cancer. But many cancers may, uh, may share different, uh, the, the same mutations, even if they are of different histological subtypes. And what we know now is that uh, any single tumor type even the most frequent, is made up of many different rare tumors if we uh, uh, look at them from a molecular point of view. And uh, we know, for example, that we may find that there are tumors such as lung adenocarcinomas and lymphomas uh, that are treated with the same drug, and the same applies for um, uh, GIST, uh, gastrointestinal somatic tumors and uh, leukemias, chronic leukemias, because they have the same molecular anomaly. And as you may see, this is just one example, uh, you have a high response rate, actually, if you take the adenocarcinomas of the lung with this particular anomaly and the right drug. So what we expect is also that we may still stick on that kind of uh, 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 classification that we have been using that has been uh, given us a lot of information in the last years, but we may also shift for some of them on a molecular-based classification uh, based on the drugs that you may use in these particular diseases. So the right drug, the right patient, the right response, this is personalized medicine, and this is the duty that, uh, uh, at least from the point of view of the genetics, uh, the International Cancer Genome Consortium is committed to. And uh, what we expect is that this will be in, let's say, 10 years maybe, the, uh, a typical response uh, for a, a carcinoma where you have histology, the pathologist gives you the, the the usual diagnosis and the cancer cellularity, as you see on the first row, and then all the information will give you uh, all the possibilities uh, to, to choose the right approach for the patient. Thank you very much.